Welcome back to Markets Today. If you are just joining us, today we've been taking a deep dive and looking at the education sector. This is on the back of the pronouncements made yesterday by the Cabinet Secretary with regards to closure of secondary schools and primary schools for the remainder of the year. We are discussing investments in this sector and speaking to different stakeholders to understand what does this mean, what does it mean for the existing model and really try and paint a perspective of how could the future look like and what interventions, if or not opportunities, are available to stakeholders or people who might consider making an investment in this space. We are joined in studio by Penina Kimani. She is the Managing Director of Spotify Learning. Welcome back, Penina. Thank you. We had a very engaging conversation earlier on and we've covered um, where the sector is yeah. and what we think could, uh, could possibly happen in terms of the way forward. And we've spent a lot of time looking at policy, looking at content, looking at interventions that could possibly drive the sector. And I like that you brought out um, some interesting facts saying that in as much as we are trying to look at the future, we don't know how that future looks like, but we can spend some time over this six months um, allowing or prompting our children to get into a space where they think about the future and mm. decide what skills they want to, to learn. Mm. Before the break, you give us a couple of things. Um, critical th thinking is important, emotional intelligence is important, and really the customer journey, trying to listening more to the customer and understanding their feedback. And all these are sort of soft skills that you can't really, I can't put it in your head and tell you this is, this is the framework for critical thinking. Mm. Now when we're looking at the next six months and saying that the content that we have needs to take a break, how then do we put some of the skill sets that you're, you're bringing up in, 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 a, in, a, in a formal space or in a space where children engage? How do we think about it if I want my kids to learn some of these skills if they're thinking a couple of years ahead? Right. Um, like I said, education doesn't have to take place at school. Uh, you can actually learn so much at home. So let your kids just be part of all your daily processes. If it's something as simple as washing dishes and putting them back on the rack, you've already learned that that's a process that has to happen from completion, where you start to wash the dishes and then you put them away. Um, so there's just small ways that our kids can actually learn a lot of values from us and learn a lot of um, intrinsic uh, information. So even if you go to the supermarket, uh, let your kid understand that you're purchasing something and then you're getting back change. So they can even do, if it's some basic arithmetic, they can do it with you. So if you buy them crisps for 100 bob um, and you gave the cashier 200 bob, then you get back 100 bob change. Like let them do that, let them understand that, um, that again, there's a mechanism that is taking a product to market and it's being purchased by a consumer. Um, so there are a lot of ways that we can continue teaching our kids okay. um, from home All and right. let them have fun with it. I think that's the most important aspect. Uh, let's not focus on, we don't need to have our children uh, slumped up in a chair, dreary, you know, upset. And that's when we're like, yes, they're learning. They've sat down for eight <laughs> hours. They have learned. They have learned. Um, there's a variety of ways you can learn. Um, okay. Now that just gives me an idea because you're also talking about the impact and the necessity for monitoring mm. and evaluation. And I'm imagining if I'm in a space where somebody is with their children and you've sort of defined the tasks of the day, because I think we'll have to have a, a lot more structure in the homestead if it's going to work. I'd like to maybe put up um, a competitive chat, who washes faster, who drives faster. Exactly. And if I was to use now the social media platform, mm. it would be very exciting to me to just, I think, TikTok is a thing where you're just like, this is what I'm doing. So if I take a, a quick photo of myself washing dishes, and this is my score for today, two. Tomorrow it becomes three. I'm actually having fun at it. Exactly. But I am at, I'm focusing on I need to win. Yes. Or even conversely, the conversation that you brought up on, if I go or somebody goes with their children to the supermarket and you give them 100 shillings and they get change, if they're able to find cheaper ways of getting mm. more value for a hundred. Mm -hmm. I'd want to give them, exactly. this is your grading today. Exactly. I gave you a hundred, you brought me back five yeah. things. You had a hundred, you brought back three. Yes. And if I make it fun, it means over time, mm. as a family, I'm also taking our responsibility mm. in ensuring that the kids are learning and monitoring and evaluation. Mm. Now, as we're defining this, technology the way you know it and looking at numbers, is there a way that now we can start bringing this fun aspect 
and use technology at least for the next six months without necessarily having to look for excessive funding because this is quite it's temporal we don't know exactly. it, it could it could be sustainable after six months but what we do know is the window is six months and then after that there will be another change in the space is that something that we can think about could that be packaged as an opportunity Absolutely. Um, it could be an application or it could be just as simple as a chart that you use on your fridge if a parent doesn't want to make an, another investment. Okay. Um, so what you just want to see is that your child can easily identify that they're making progress. So today you got two, tomorrow you got three, the next day you got four and you're seeing an upward trajectory for them to understand, yes, that's good, that's progress. And even on the days that they perhaps don't um, achieve what they achieved the previous day, let them understand, so what happened today? Let them explain to you um, what they thought they had done right mm -hmm. and if they had deserved a higher score perhaps, that's a critical thinking element. And then they can also start to internalize and understand, oh, this is where I went wrong. Um, and even if you look at um, discipline, I don't think that we need such rigid structures in life because even if you look at how the markets are trending and I mean, we not bothered about office space. Um, a lot of companies now have actually said employees can work from home permanently post COVID. Are we instilling discipline in someone that you don't have to have someone watching over you consistently to do the work? So for the next six months, if your child has 10 tasks to do in a day, it's not a must that you police them and the time that they have to do the task, just let them know that these tasks have to be accomplished. At what point do you think you can do them? Wow. I, get, I feel like I'm just getting light bulb moments, Penina. It's like you just, you're, you're shedding so much light. Because I come back to the context of when we were on break, we were just talking about the cultural flaws of, of us as a people of Kenya and some of the things that sort of um, hinder us from mm. moving forward. And mm. I know we talked about things uh, to do with corporate governance and funding and why don't people in this space attract money. Maybe that's a conversation for later. But it... As we're talking about discipline, what comes to mind is this. Typically, it takes about seven years for a proper a mental shift to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, if I meet you in seven years, what you've been doing for the last seven years will define what kind of person you are. So if you have been engaging in destructive habits, right. you'll be, you know, a shadow of your former self. Right. If you have been engaging in constructive habits, you'll be, you'll be phenomenal. You'll be much better than you are. And how I'm looking at this space um, for education today, especially with COVID, is we could either spend time focusing on the negative or we could mm. be like, oh my goodness, this mm. is the beginning of that mental shift mm -hmm. that we've been wanting as a country exactly. where if we do the right things now as parents and actually find a way of integrating technology in our day to day and if the investors and stakeholders in the space find a way of helping us be accountable to one another in that space, then you're setting the ball rolling. Mm. You're, you're putting seeds in the minds of these children and telling them the new world is the fourth industrial revolution. Exactly. Um, no one knows how it's going to look like. What will set you apart really is your character. And so today we are coming back to a space of six months and asking what are the fun and interesting ways of engaging my child with the objective of building their character mm. because no one is going to come and tell me Ten for your self-discipline. <laughs> no one cares, you know. Yeah. But if I make it fun, mm. then I have that momentum to actually instill that habit in, into the children. So the question for you, or back to you, and, and, and I don't ex expect an exact answer because it's really a brainstorm, so to speak. Based on what I'm describing, and based on what you know of technology and how the education set uh, setup is in Kenya, is this what I'm talking? Is it something that can come down from an idea into an actual product or service? I think anything can. It's possible. <laughs> anything is possible. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. That absolutely. sounds like I'm, I'm out of the park. <laughs> of the absolutely park. anything is possible. Um, so if I, if I think about what it takes to now, let's say, start a startup, a ed tech or yes. any sort of tech, technology startup. Um, so first you're identifying what the problem is. Um, clearly defined what, what are the issues, what are we trying to solve, then you can go to market and see are there already existing solutions for that and if so, where, where are they not meeting the exact needs of the market, can you do better? Because sometimes you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you can just improve on what's already there. Okay. If there are no existing solutions, then now you really have to spend a lot of time um, on the ground to understand um, 
what opportunities are, are there for us to fix this particular problem. Um, so for me personally, when I started my journey with Spotify, what I was most interested in was teaching schools about different pedagogies, that's different teaching methodologies. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually a teacher. I used to teach A-level oh, economics wow. and business studies here Is at the it? Learning Center in La Yeah. Okay. And so what I realized was a lot of the kids who had come to our center were failing in their previous institutions, but still managed to um, very well in our institution. And so what I realized was this is because of how we are teaching. So you may all have the same content, but based on how you're teaching, that matters. Also, I think students relate more with teachers who put in that effort, that extra effort, to really understand, like, how is it that you understand things, Niti? And how do I make sure that I'm creating content that you understand? So I was like, oh, that's my, that's my plan. Yes, hmm? OK. <laughs> Going to teach schools about <laughs> different teaching methodologies to make sure every kid excels. And then, so now once I went to the ground and then you're, you know, you're interviewing different stakeholders, you're interviewing different parents from different socioeconomic backgrounds, different teachers, directors, and they're like, oh my goodness, we have such fundamental problems before we start t thinking about the different ways to teach. Do I even, am I even aware of who is in class today to think about who deserves okay. what methodology, right? Have I been tracking previously? Uh, is this someone who is more visual? Is someone who is more analytical? Have I been tracking that data beforehand? No. Um, do I even have the resources in place to start putting these systems in, in, into place? Uh, again, no. So that's now how Spotify was born, um, understanding that there are these fundamental aspects of a school's ability to provide their kids with an education that are critical. And so, again, for any sort of system that you're talking okay. about, like you just have to really go down and listen and understand and then build from there. Okay. So I think what, it, what you're saying is in as much as the opportunities could be there yeah. or not there. I think right now the, the key thing that anyone needs to do if they are an existing investor in this space or are considering this space is you have to find a way to actively listen. Ask and listen more right. than um, shout out your solutions or your frustrations towards some of the decisions that are made and then now move from there and see if there's any product that you can be able to create to, to tap into this. Is that maybe a better way of looking at it. Exactly. And then I think um, as well, if you're an investor, what's your investment horizon? Um, if you're looking for a return investment in the next six months, then don't deploy um, any capital. OK. Um, if you've seen what the market has now said that, oh my goodness, technology is going to play a major role going forward post COVID, then this is actually the prime time to make that investment. Um, you'd be probably get a better valuation. I okay. mean, from an investor's perspective, yes, not yes, from please. a founder's perspective. No, from an investor's <laughs> perspective. From an investor's perspective, they'd get a, a better valuation uh, for their capital. This is actually the prime time for them to invest, looking at the trajectory of the education space and market. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's, what's a long-term horizon? Is that 50 years? Because kids will be <laughs> planning. <laughs> I don't think I'm investing. Right? I know, I'm joking. <laughs> right, but, right, no. um, but I mean, most funds are uh, five to seven years. So five to seven years. So yeah. take a five to seven year um, perspective, but you're also bringing out the key context, uh, context here. If you're going to be in this space and continue, exactly, you have to go back and look at your integration with technology. Yes. Because the, the reality is this is going to end. It's, it's, it's painful. There, yes. will, there will be an adjustment. Exactly. Some people will survive. Uh, maybe a good number will survive, some might not survive, depending on their cash flow habits. Then I think as we're coming to close, maybe one or two more things that I'd like to bring in. So technology is pertinent in terms of how you're looking at the future if you are a stakeholder in this space. Then as an investor and you are in that space and you have a financial background, you also have a technical background in terms of teaching, how do you look at return on investment and, and cash flow management? at this time and not just at this time mm. even going into the future because i don't think it's ever been a problem because we've always yes, known absolutely january the children are here yeah, absolutely. you know do a run stop they come back it's <laughs> I, it's never it's never happened yeah. but then what this is bringing out from a financial perspective cash flow cash is king how do we think about it what are there any adjustments that you can think of in terms of how do we ensure that we are not just surviving for the sake of surviving but we are actually thriving um, so again, there's n no, the same way they tell people to have multiple streams of income, so should any, so should any business. Okay. Therefore, you can now start relying on, on other income streams to manage a particular business. 
Um, I think what I've been seeing quite interestingly now is if you're looking at what Amazon is doing. So they're getting a lot of their income from AWS and then reinvesting that and subs heavily subsidizing other businesses. Yes. Um, looking at it from a long-term perspective, especially like the grocery store chains, um, can we capture this market in the next couple of years by almost undermining everyone else in the industry because we're feeding into that with different cash flows. Uh, so I think that's also a different strategy as well. You can just look at um, one business being a cash cow and another one you're looking at it from a longer uh, horizon okay. perspective. Okay, and I, what, I, what I get from that is also perhaps the education systems have not been critically thinking or strategically yeah. thinking about their universe because mm. e effectively every school has a community and it has a community of different people. It has, if, I ha if I run a school and I have a thousand students, for example, this a thousand students yeah. have parents. Absolutely. If you assume that it's only single parents, that's a community of 2,000. If you assume that both parents are there, that's a community of 3,000. If you assume that maybe um, all this, um, a good percentage of this, maybe half of them have siblings, you've already got into 3,500. Mm -hmm. So effectively from a community of a thousand active ch uh, going children, school going children, you have a community that extends to 5,000. And at an economic level, we keep talking about the multiplier effect. Right. But I don't think I've seen a school that has been very active in looking at the multiplier effect and assessing the needs of that community and trying to see how can we meet these needs as people who spend the most time right. with, with these right. people. And, yeah. I, and I bring that in the context of when you talk about multiple revenue streams. So maybe that, that's also a different way of thinking. If I'm going to go back to this school beyond just school fees, can I develop at least two or three other ways of engaging and adding value over time and then exactly. double that maybe in six or ten years? Exactly. Okay, interesting. I feel this conversation could keep going, but <laughs> my director tells me that uh, we're almost done on time. Okay. I, I would hope to have you back here, though. Definitely. So, and as we conclude yeah. this conversation, what, what are your closing remarks in as far as education and everything we've talked about and in light of the six months ahead of us? Um, I think that this is the opportune time for us to really reinvest in understanding what education means to us, uh, what education means to our children, and how we can be best placed to ensure that the skill sets that we're teaching our children are valuable to keep growing our economy in the future. So this is really, um, we almost have a sort of lull, a break in which that we can really critically think about all of these issues. Okay, thank you so much, thank Penina, you. for your time. That was uh, Penina Kimani. She is the Managing Director for Spotify Learning. This has been a very, very interesting conversation on the education sector. We started off by saying we have now six months where children are not going to school. And we appreciate that it's a very difficult decision for the government to make. But honestly, it's better to have your child with you than to have to go through the pain of having a child in a casket. That said, there is a responsibility for you as a parent, as well as for investors in this space, to critically think and review and assess what is happening in the education sector and what needs to happen going forward. And I think one of the things that we've actually had from this space is two key things that you need to take out from us. Technology is important. Are you an investor in this space? Are you looking at this space? You need to find a way to integrate technology into your day-to-day -day, um, operations and just try and see how can you move forward. Technology helps you in terms of efficiency. It also helps you in, in as far as scalability of the products that you're doing. The second thing that we've actually sort of come to conclusion is uh, the fact that you need to enhance your revenue streams. If you are an education facility, your touch points are more than you have ever possibly imagined. And perhaps COVID is making it critical for you to review and see how can you service your people and generate, if not one, maybe two, three, up to eight revenue streams from that community that you have there. Spotify Learning is an, uh, it's, it's a, a technology opportunity, rather technology investment and a technology startup in the education space. And they help education facilities manage attendance as well as monitoring and evaluation of the education facilities and services that they offer there. They do have 30 schools on their platform and about 5,000 students on their platform as well. That's certainly something that you want to look up into and see if you can engage with them for them to help you in your journey in the education system. Penina, is there a way that people can reach out to you if they're interested in this? 
Yes, absolutely. So they can reach us on email. It can reach me personally on email at pinina at sproutfy at s-p-r-o-u-t-f-y dot com or our corporate email which is contact at sproutfy dot com which is s-p-r-o-u-t-f-y um, also all, all, all social media, Facebook, Twitter, okay. Instagram, we're there. All right. Thank you so much for your time. That's all we have for you today. See you on the next show of Markets Today. Good day.